terms of uh, you know, three games in four days. I'm sorry that none of you got to go. You might have enjoyed uh, actually going to Puerto Rico, but uh, I did get a chance to see the last uh, 20 minutes of our football game, and I uh, was that that had to be thrilling to be there and to be a part of that. That was unbelievable. I was so excited. Uh, we were all watching it and just jumping for joy when uh, that block punt. That kid will always be a hero now in the history of Mississippi State forever. Uh, to block that punt, but what a great game. Anyway, back to us. Uh, you know, we really lost to a great team in Miami, who, you know, totally outclassed the tournament. I was looking at the coaches poll today, and, and uh, I can see about eight or nine teams ahead of them that they're better than, for, in my mind, for sure. I think that they're a top ten team. Uh, we still played very poorly against them. It wasn't even a contest. Uh, I thought we played much better against Texas Tech, uh, even though we had the same issues of uh, not being able to stay out of foul trouble with our man defense, and so we had to play zone that second half. We had great opportunities to win that game, up four with the, with the ball, uh, uh, having a chance to go up five. Chicken had a layup, not a layup, a shot to the basket. That instead of shooting left hand, I wish he would have come back with the right and got fouled. It was a foul waiting to happen, and uh, we didn't make the play. Uh, we had a play where we're up three, the ball's going out of bounds, and inexplicably we saved it, and then they hit a three on that same possession. That, you know, just a multitude of things that went wrong. A, a bad foul by Gavin that we talked about with him. That, uh, you know, up and down one with the ball that turned into a, a flagrant one. They shoot and, and, you know, so all the mistakes we could make. And, uh, you know, Texas solid team. And then I thought we played our best half of the year on Sunday against Missouri State. The first half, we really played well. Played very unselfishly, which is a key for us offensively. I thought we really shared the basketball, made the extra pass. And played good, solid man-to-man -man defense. Held them to 32% from the field without fouling. So hopefully that's a, a step. I think we made a positive step that day. And this week, these, these practices leading up to UT Martin are to try to build on that step. And also understand, you know, all the areas of need we need to get better at, which is number one defensively. I mean, we're still making mistakes in transition D, not knowing who's supposed to be back. And that's why it's tough to play. Uh, a tournament like that, that early in the season, it's really, really difficult. I, mean, I would have preferred not to have to play three games in four days because you're not making a lot of corrections, especially when you're playing back-to-back -back games. You're on to the next game, just trying to prepare the best you can. Questions? Malik kind of got some extended minutes in the tournament. How do you kind of judge where he is right now? Well, I thought that, uh, you know, it was uh, really tough to throw him into the Southern game the way we did with just one practice under his belt after being out three weeks. And I thought that throughout the tournament he got better with each opportunity. And I thought he played his best uh, against Missouri State and actually made three big shots in the second half when they cut our 18-point lead from the half down to four. Uh, twice he, he made big shots in that game and was really impressive down the stretch. <clears throat> and I thought he made some really nice passes too. And I thought that our unselfishness, we had, I think, 20 assists for the game um, and only 10 turnovers, and that's the kind of numbers we need to have. Uh, but overall, I thought Malik improved with each game. I think he's getting better shape. And now this is a big week now. He's back. Seemingly his toe. Back when he got over there, he had a blister on his other toe. So, you know, <laughs> but it was, wasn't a, uh, a ligament issue. How big is today? You, you mentioned before Puerto Rico that, you were ready to get back to practice to focus on the defensive issues. Talk about getting back in that today. Yeah, well, I mean, it's big for us. I mean, not only today, but, you know, we're staying here as a team tomorrow. We're going to have Thanksgiving dinner together uh, as a group. Uh, we'll practice a short practice on Friday because it's a noon game Saturday. So, you know, these practices for us are, are very, very important uh, moving forward. And uh, we've got to grow from them. Do you have update on Demetri Chiefs? Uh, no, the status is the same right now. It's better than that. Any update on Eric Holman as far as his progress? You know, uh, according to our trainer, we're hoping that he'll be out on the court trying to do some stuff. I don't think with contact, but uh, by uh, 
Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th. That, that's the target to get him back out there and have my thing go through stuff, you know, where he's going. Now, he actually went through, like, uh, five on, uh, not even five on zero, some, some shooting, some stuff like that with the team over in Puerto Rico on, on shoot around day. Does it just depend on when, what you see from him when he gets back? No, it, it, it depends play. more on what they think uh, he's ready to be. I mean, in other words, he's not, right now, he's still, I think, uh, you know, weeks away from playing with contact. Is there a, a kind of a, a, a due date in your head to, like, if he can't come by this time, we'll redshirt him? Or yeah, that? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm just hoping he can get healthy enough again so he can start practicing. That, would, that in itself would be a blessing for us, you know. We have another body out there that can help us. And he's a great kid. Uh, I just started in the hallway, you know, two minutes ago. Talked to uh, Elijah Staley yesterday, and he said he's going to meet with you on Sunday. What's uh, your plans for him to, if you're going to interview him? I have no plan. I've never spoken to Elijah Staley. I mean, uh, you know, he came around when we first got the job and said, hey, I play both, and, you know, I, I like to play both. And, you know, his, his focus needs to be football and Ole Miss and their bowl game and, uh, you know, focusing on whatever he can do to help the football team who has a chance to – potentially get to a sugar ball if everything falls right for us. So uh, th this is the first time hearing about me meeting with Elijah Staley on Sunday. So <laughs> thanks for letting me know. <laughs> when you talk about the defense, this team was pretty – if there was a strength, it was a defense last year. What's kind of changed since – what are some of the issues that are – Can I say that again? If there was a strength of the team last year, it was probably the defense. Um, this year it kind of seems to be the offense. What, what needs to happen for that defense to – kind of come back to what it was last year? You know what? Uh, last year they played different. I mean, if you look last year, I would say that, you know, when you're, you're talking about playing so much faster offensively mm -hmm. and that being a real emphasis, I think, in the long term of this season, it's going to help us. Uh, but, you know, for us, it's about having depth. It's about having guys that can go in when uh, we're in foul trouble and making mistakes. and. Uh, you know, so I, I think that we'll get better defensively. I think we took a you know, step forward in that direction on uh, Sunday. But we want to be able to do both. I want to be able to be good offensively and good defensively. And typically, if you look at my career as a basketball coach, uh, people would think of me as a defensive coach first. So I think that we will get there. It's just you know, we're trying to add and do so many things. I thought we were so poor offensively. Right. When I arrived here, I thought we were so, just, you know, we spent so much time just working on the fundamentals of shooting in our two whole hours a week with our players in the off season. That it was a priority. I mean, if you, you know, you can't shoot. Um, it still comes down to that. I mean, we, we've still got to be able to put the ball in the basket here at some point. We've got to get, our blockouts are bad. I mean, every single aspect has to get better. Stay in front of the ball. We're really dependent on two freshmen. Uh, in the backcourt, you know, two of our top five players in the backcourt are freshmen who, who are learning about defense for the first time. Uh, and they're going to play. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop playing uh, Malik and Q because they, they've got so far to go defensively. We need them to grow as players. So, uh, you know, it's a, a, a big part of it. Is that always the, the toughest thing for freshmen coming up? Absolutely. Defense? They have no idea uh, what it's going to be like at this level, at the next level, and how important it is and how much more accountability there is and just all the little things that go into it. I mean, in fact, when I think about Malik, I was thinking a lot about Shabazz. You know, Shabazz Muhammad, who played for me, he said missed the first three games of the year uh, and then became eligible, right? In the, you know, exactly the kind of situation. Right. Couldn't play in the exhibition games, and then missed the he missed five games. And he was really, really lacking defensively coming into the games uh, initially. And he had to get better, and he got it, because it's, now it's on film, now it's on TV. Now the announcers are going, hey, God, he's you know, not trailing without separation or whatever it is. They get it, people see it. And uh, so when it starts getting point out like that, then it becomes more of a real point. And my point with, with Malik is, is by missing all that time early, it really hurt him, you know, just from the standpoint of growth in, in, in those areas where now you're thrown right into the fire. What have you seen from UT Martin on the film? 
You know, just a little bit. I mean, my assistants are bringing it down right now. I've been re re focusing on our games and watching them again. Uh, but, you know, bottom line is I've seen some film on them. They're a very talented team. They've got good personnel. They play, you know, 10 plus guys per game. So you got a little mat matchups. It's a matchup difficulty. They, they have a really good kid who transferred from UTEP. Uh, you guys tell me his name because he's from Pearl, Mississippi. Uh, last name that starts with an M. He played football in high school, so big time football player as a sophomore, and then focused on basketball his last couple of years. But he's a good player. He's a problem. And he's a four who, like in many cases, uh, a four for their team that's really a three. Uh, I don't have the name in front of me right now, but they've got some good players, and he is a very good coach. Uh, you know, Schroyer's had great success at Portland State. Uh, I know him when he was an assistant at BYU. He, he does a great job, so it's going to be a tough game for us. Hopefully we'll have a, a good home environment because uh, it's the same in the day as our football game, and so there will be a lot of people here on campus and in town. You changed your lineup, I guess it was, the Texas Tech game mm -hmm. with Freddie and, and Malik and Craig. What did you think after seeing that, your thoughts about that lineup? Well, I mean, that, that's what our lineup will be here. Uh, going into uh, our next game. You know, Fred, actually, after the Miami game, came to uh, the trainer and the staff and didn't think he was going to be able to play the next day. He had bumped his knee. And I wasn't planning on making that. I was going to you know, try to give Malik a little more time to assimilate himself. But then during the shoot-around that day, he was just out of it. He was out of it. Uh, you know, he made, shot a couple air balls. And, and it was like, you know, he was really thinking about it, I guess. And he, he was really out of it during the game. Uh, Playing wise, uh, but then he he bounced back and had uh, you know a really solid performance for us against Missouri State. But I think that for us that lineup is a lineup that's going to be good for us. And at the end of the day, all five of those guys are playing major roles. And that's what I'm saying. You know, when you compare our team last year, it's kind of hard to do because we've got two freshmen in the lineup that weren't even here a year ago that you know are learning on the job, so to speak, as all freshmen do. And then Johnny's playing for the first time. He, he couldn't even practice a year ago because he's coming off a of knee surgery. Uh, How's that kind of come together, you know, melding the new? Has, what, what have been some of the struggles so far or the, the successes that you've had trying to meld those new with the, old, with the older players? Uh, you know, they, they've been together all summer, so I mean, guys have been healthy and together, but you know, it's different once you start playing against other people and you start doing stuff five on five. Uh, you know, it's, and, and that's been difficult for us. I mean, you know, you ask, well, one of the things that's been tough for all our injuries. Like I, like I said, the biggest problem with not having Xavier and Stapleton, not having Eric Holman, not having Joe Strug, and then having other guys being injured, is just being able to have competitive practices on a day in day out basis. You know, it's hard. Where you improve the most as a player and as a team is in your practices uh, and, and being able to have great competition in those practices. So, you know, we, we have to continue to find ways to, to do that. And Like, for example, today, uh, you know, we have nine, uh, you know, scholarship athletes that are there. And Jet is doing a good job for us as the 10th guy in practice now. And we're hoping, I'm mean, like you're someone, you know, you asked about home today. I'm excited to get Eric Holman back, just to get him to practice. It's going to be huge. It gives us another body. It means that we're going to have to play, you know, Johnny or probably uh, Travis um, as a three man in practice because, you know, he can't play that position. But that'll be good. Any other questions? Okay, okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you.